Hello, fellow squids. We're back. The kids are back. It is us. We are back. Hello. It, this is Emily. Emily from the Monterey Bay Aquarium social media team hanging out. We are playing games. Who's this new, it's, who's this new character? This is, <laughs> We've got a new I don't remember the Emily. controls. <laughs> It's it's chaos already. Hello, hello everybody. Um, welcome to the Monterey Bay Aquarium live here on Twitch. We've and already YouTube. gone off the rails. It's it's chaos. I just realized that that was still on too. So and the the game audio isn't on yet. There we go. Oh, but look at us go! It's look, a we've disaster. got little. We've got little animated icons on the upper left look at look that at that. look how fancy we are now <laughs> look at that we are professionals right now it's not a friday stream yet no but it feels like it uh sure feels <laughs> it's so good like to be it. there everybody no we uh, <laughs> of course of course knowing us we had uh we had all the difficulties in the world between streaming software and platforms and restreaming, etc. So it's good to be here, everybody. You may hear Trooper there in the background. Uh, and there's Trooper's icon right there below. Awesome. Yeah. Um, but uh, hey, everybody. Hi, Emily. <laughs> Sorry, I, I realize you didn't introduce me yet. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, this is Emily. That's Patrick. Um, we're... <laughs> Oh, if this is your first stream, I'm sorry. No, this is a really good introduction to what it is like. Uh, welcome, everybody, to another educational gaming stream here at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Engineer M, uh, first of all, everybody, if we could just get um, some W's, some GG's in the chat. To, uh, Emily, for getting the stream up and running. We had all the issues possible <laughs> yet again, but we, we figured it out. Uh, sorry for being late, everybody, if you were tuning in. Um, uh, but uh, Herculean efforts over there on, uh, on Emily's side of things. Um, thank you so much, uh, Emily, as always, for setting up the gaming stream. And uh, yeah, here we are, everybody. It's been, Hello, YouTube. Yeah, Hello, it's, Twitch. It's been almost a month, so uh, forgive us, please. <laughs> please. And by us, I mean me. Pat was here. He was on time. He was ready to go. I thought that I was ready to go. No, I have very, I have very little to do on, on my end. <laughs> Emily is the one currently playing Abzu uh, in Hello. her home about uh, about seven. Oh, no, more than that now. About uh, um 10 or 12 or so miles there across the bay. Hello, Emily. I'm waving at you here from uh, from my side. And uh, yeah, we're here in the, I mean, I guess this is good heading into a spoopy season, Emily, with uh, with Halloween coming up next month. We're here in, in the creepy, spoopy, uh, deep sea yeah. whale fall area that we ended on about a month ago, like the, you were saying. The area that I, uh, I died in <laughs> last time. So I'm, I'm keeping my eye on all of these these weird triangles, these these death triangles that surround me. I guess death pyramid, three dimensional. Objects. That's right. And for anyone uh, who is watching um, and wanting to explain to us where to go, what to do, we will ask uh, as needed. <laughs> um, uh, we are doing a little bit of a blind playthrough here, but we're mainly going to be nerding out, talking about the marine biology and the marine science, answering your questions uh, as as possible. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, thanks to the moderators that are there, uh, out there making sure we're, we're looking good there in the chat. And uh, yeah, no backseat gaming necessary because we are not really gaming, are we, Emily? We're just kind of hanging no. out with our with our favorite yeah. friends here, our, our fishy friends here in, in Abzu. Yeah, if you are here for a, a, a speed run, I am, I am so sorry to disappoint. This is a slow run. Um, the slowest run possible through through Abzu. So we're on um, episode four and a half of 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 playing through Abzu right now. Um, four and a half because we streamed for like a half an hour here on Twitch that one time. But uh, episode four, I guess, officially, officially. Um, oh, speaking fish, of, I have not been doing our pun counter. Our, our, oh, good. Oh, good. The mods. The mods have been. The mods have been doing been so. Crushing. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so we're at least up to three puns <laughs> there. Um, so yeah, if you are if you are new to the gaming streams, there's a lot of puns, a lot of tomfoolery. Uh, the Friday streams are a little bit looser, but you know it's been a month, so we've got a couple of Fridays uh, in us here. Um, but uh, yeah, if you are just joining us, 
This is Abzu, a really, really, uh, absolutely, absolutely, we can say those puns again, a beautiful game here. Uh, lots of different characters from the Monterey Bay and the ocean in our backyard, and then here on the Whale Fall uh, uh, Zone, which we know intimately here at the Aquarium, and uh, you folks out there may know from our social media that we're getting ready for Into the Deep, a new deep sea exhibition that's finally out there in the world. So uh, we'll be working with Whale Falls and other cool critters. There you go. Emily's flying through the whale skeleton. Awesome. Um and uh, and so, yeah, we'll be looking closely at different critters, organisms like our very favorite sea pig, <laughs> sea cucumber, hanging out right there in front of you, Emily. Um, so, yeah, hard at work on that. And uh, oh, it looks like you're doing a barrel roll of excitement there, Emily. <laughs> oh, it's the only uh, emote that I have in this game is the barrel rolls of excitement. So. Do a barrel roll. <laughs> we should uh, name your character Peppy then. Um, that's a gaming reference for all you folks out there. Uh, ready, ready, ready. Parkour. There we go. Hardcore parkour. There you go. <laughs> We're flipping out here. Uh, yeah, so the um, the whale fall, uh, as the name describes, is when a whale dies and falls to the sea floor, which brings with it tons and tons of food to the deep sea floor for the scavengers uh, down there, like these sea pigs, like the little swimming crab that's very excited to see you. Um, and so we'll be working on uh, a few different animals, and in particular, uh, Emily, one, one animal that we are working really hard on uh, to try to get on exhibit for everybody. Uh, and we don't know if we'll be successful, but we, we do have amazing Aquarius uh, working on it. Uh, Emily are the Osadax bone-eating worms. So clearly this is a fresh whale fall down here because after a while, uh, these uh, whale bones, these whale ribs that you're there next to would be looking rather fuzzy right yes that was would. a leading that was a leading statement <laughs> sorry i was i was looking at chat no, no, there no. for I, a second I realized, yes i realized i was yes, halfway yes, yes, through yes, a question yes. and then i ended abruptly <laughs> <laughs> Emily, tell us about bone eating worms <laughs> bone eating worms osidax um i i feel like i should apologize too because i was kind of like half listening to you and then all of a sudden you said my name and i was like oh no Oh no, he's gonna know oh. I wasn't listening. I was so no, sorry. No, no worries. No, I, I um. understand how this goes. I'll talk. You tune in whenever you need to. Dealing with all the other tech. That's what our deep sea uh, live stream was like yesterday, where I just came back and asked the same question that you it's had answered because I was dealing with my internet crashing. Great moments in streaming. Welcome everyone. Uh, professionals. The professionals Oops. are here. They have arrived. Um, yeah. wonderful. Uh, yeah, bone eating worms. They are awesome. Uh, add them to your list of favorite spoopy animals uh, that will uh, live off of uh, the nutrients that they can extract from uh, bones down in the deep sea. And yeah, like you said, I did hear that, Pat, that, that we are trying to culture them, um, to grow them and, and display them. Um, uh, in the new exhibit, hopefully coming, I think now 2022, 2022. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, some point out there. Some in, point. In, in the 2020s. Yep. <laughs> some point in the future, uh, we're going to have a, a deep sea exhibit. And those worms, I'm really excited to see them. Um, yeah. yeah. The bone eating yeah. worms. Osidax. It's just, it, it's one of, it, it's a perfect, you know, we'll, we'll just call this a, a little bit of an early Halloween stream or like spoopy season, right? Because bones. Sometimes they're called bone-eating zombie worms, right, Emily? <laughs> yeah, yeah, bone-eating zombie worms. So add that to your list of uh, awesomely named deep-sea animals, including uh, ghost sharks, or uh, what was the the one that we uh, named recently? The ninja ninja lantern shark, was it? Was it? It was ninja something shark. Oh. Wow, uh, I no, I have no idea. Does chat remember? I, Ninja Lantern Shark. Okay, now I'm now I'm going to the Googles. Nin, okay, Ninja... we got we got to look it up. But I mean, yeah. you know, typical spoopy animals. We might talk about uh, our vampire squid. Uh, we currently have oh Humboldt squid there in the background okay. that just devoured one of the fish there. Those are known as uh, red sea devils in. Uh, in many areas, um, devilfish, uh, because of their, um, 
aggression. You can see that color change happening with that Humboldt squid opening up its arms, grabbing that food there. The flashing uh, that it does there is some video that we actually have from Mbari, Monterey Bay Aquarium yeah. Research Institute. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Sorry, what okay. were you saying, Emily? Uh, no, I was just going to say in the time vortex that has been 2020, everything in my brain has compressed as far as timelines go. And so what I mean by we, you know, it was named recently. What I really mean is that it was named in 2015. <clears throat> uh, right. But yeah, Ninja Lantern Shark. That was last shark. year. Ninja Lantern yeah, Shark. That. Yeah, that was just last year. You know, whenever I see people refer to things that happened in the early 2000s, I always feel like that's just 10 years ago, but it is not anymore. Um, but <laughs> in to, with, with that time warp, but in particular here, Emily, uh, speaking of, you know, a time warp, uh, this whale has been down here for a little bit. It's been completely cleaned here. Um, but uh, the nutrients that stay down here in the deep sea from something like a whale fall like this might um, stay down here in this ecosystem, never returning back up to the surface for, I believe, for some of the, some of the science out there is over a thousand years that you have the yeah. nutrition from that surface that comes down into the deep. And it takes about a thousand years for that to even be recycled up to the surface. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Sorry. I got, I got distracted by trying to remember my controls again. Uh, no, no worries. Um, so for, for those of you folks out there who are, uh, who are wondering here about um, the deep sea exhibit uh, and where we happen to be. A lot of these animals here, oh, are those viper fish? They kind of look like viper fish, yeah. They do look like viper fish. Um, we have our colleagues, the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, or MBARI, that do a lot of deep sea research out here in the Monterey Bay. If you want a really awesome YouTube channel with uh, just deep sea animals extraordinaire, head over to uh, MBARI's YouTube channel to see some of those uh, those viper fish that you just saw there, there's hagfish video, there's Humboldt squid video. I mean, this is basically, this is basically our deep sea exhibit here, Emily. I, we should maybe yeah. let the exhibit folks know that they don't, we should just play this on a screen, right? And yeah. just, <laughs> just talk over it. Yeah. It's just <laughs> you and I in a room playing this game <laughs> with people just walking through. Oh, uh, we've got somebody over here saying this reminds them of the EV Nautilus live streams. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, we actually know some of the folks that run that social media over there. So shout out to EV Nautilus if you want to see some uh, nerding out over the deep oh, sea I'm in real time. Again. Oh, sorry, Emily. Sorry, sorry. I knew that you was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen too. I'm just going to hide right here. Okay. It's yeah. chill. We'll just, it's re chill. We'll just recover it's here chill. real quick. <laughs> So um, um, evil, evil exploding electrical pyramids are not something you oh, typically it's gonna find. It's going to uh, go again. Oh, no. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> uh, no, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Which it's good. Uh, You're yeah, good? <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. No evil, okay. no evil pyramids of death. Well, just hanging out next to this this whale jawbone, we can just talk a little bit about yeah. you know how incredibly massive whales are. Uh, <laughs> um, if this is a blue whale uh, skeleton, which we saw blue whales in the previous episode of Abzu, um, they can have uh, lower mandibles like that that are absolutely ginormous, tens of feet long, um, and uh, when those mouths drop down they'll open up uh, almost at a 90 degree angle, allowing the whale to engulf uh, many, many tons of seawater and krill or, uh, or tuna crabs, whichever they happen to be feeding on at the time. And then they'll filter it out with the baleen, which baleen is not uh, visible here in this particular whale fall. Um, I believe that that the baleen being keratin will actually um, break down a lot faster over time than the bones yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, Pat, did you yeah. see that? Uh, I know because we were just talking about Evie Nautilus. Uh, they're going to be in our backyard like next week. Yeah, they're coming down. That's to the right. Sanctuary. Yeah, they're going to be off of uh, San Francisco over by the Farallon Islands National Marine oh, cool. Sanctuary. And then they're going to come down and hang out here in uh, the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. Visit a couple of spots here. I think they're going to go visit uh, one of the whale falls here in the bay and then uh, head down to Davidson Seamount. Um, check out the uh, octopus yeah. garden down there. So um, I'll probably be watching those. So yeah, no, fun. that sounds they I mean, they they discovered a whale fall recently uh, out near Davidson Seamount, like you were mentioning there. Uh, and then our Mbari, um, our Mbari technicians, I believe that's one of the whales that was scanned in 3D over on their Sketchfab. So if you head over to Sketchfab, 
dot com and search for Embari again. You might. I think. I think that's one of the whales that they. Uh, yeah. That they scanned. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so shout out Ben uh, yeah, Irwin and ben Nautilus Irwin. Live for that collab there. Woo. Um, we just had a question over on Twitch. Pat, are whales technically yep. megafauna? And uh, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that they define megafauna. <laughs> they are. <laughs> they are the poster yeah. child for megafauna. Um, yeah. They are quite literally mega and fauna. So yes, absolutely mega Absolute. fauna. Absolutely. Um, hey, and, uh, em- is, yeah. Yeah. No, Emily, you know what I was, sorry, what I was realizing uh, is that what we should do is we should uh, put a lav mic on Trooper. That way she can pop up on the screen like we are. (laughs) 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 Next time she woofs. I guess uh, she hasn't woofed in a while, so we'll. uh, No, but uh, I'm just looking at, I'm looking at the screen there. No, no, it'd be funny if we, (laughs) if we had a lav mic on her so she could. (laughs) She can have her own discord. (laughs) Yeah, mic for Borks. (laughs) <laughs> sorry i uh, um oh over on twitch as well we've got terrible uh misery i hope everything is is better than than the oh. name implies but uh oh, no. almost try to answer about baleen like you would in your zoology class um what would you like to share with, with the chat about baleen if you have anything feel free to drop some of those some of those notes here yeah uh in the ba- baleen into it yeah yeah baleen into it absolutely yeah you know we're trying to filter our content down to specific uh, um, feeding mechanisms of whales, so this works out perfect. Um, um, Pat, I don't know the answer to this question, but I, I mean, I, I can make an educated guess. But uh, Tarquin over on Twitch asked, "Do blue whales have strong tendons to let their jaw open so wide?" And I mean, I would assume so. I assume that those muscles and tendons there are just absolutely beefy. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I'm sure that if we knew. Ex- you know exactly what was going on it would blew all of our minds uh but the what i've heard about the blue whale mouth opening uh is that it's the largest single biomechanical event that occurs on this planet in terms of you've got potentially you know you've got over a hundred tons of whales swimming rather quickly um blue whales are in the roar coal uh type of baleen whale which were some of the last whales to be hunted actually because they were so much faster then the boats that were chasing after them it took uh, modern engines to be able to keep up uh with the whales when they started being being hunted so blue whales i think you know they can cruise over 20 knots uh when they really want to and then when they are swimming up to their food when they drop that jaw down they basically go from you know uh, a a very fast pace to basically slowing down to a stop opening up that jaw and then their throat pleats that that pouch there below their below their head opens up and again it's it's many many tons of krill uh that or tons of water with krill that come in they might be eating about a ton of food in a single mouthful and yeah when that when that uh when that jaw drops i mean the the forces exerted are are absolutely immense uh, yeah. on on that and um i think it, it the documentary that i was watching is called inside nature's giants uh where they talk about sperm whales so if you want to see what what tendons can do uh check out inside nature's giants and the sperm whale episode because those tendons are just mind-blowing yeah for what what the sperm whale has to do yeah um pat i have a very important distraction um that was brought up by uh mech mass over on twitch um uh-huh. who said baleen isn't that a dolly parton song and i cannot get that out of my <laughs> head now <laughs> baleen 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 please oh please won't you eat all this crew <laughs> oh that was bad that was really bad uh... don't clip that Oh, Don't clip that. Man. Oh, we're hearing that maybe the chat over on YouTube is broken. Oh, no. Oof. Sorry about that. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> uh, I hope it was before the 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 singing and that I didn't do that <laughs> <laughs> to you all. Um, um, Schrodinger's cat over on YouTube, though, has a wonderful question. How are you going to have a deep sea exhibit without the pressure of I'm the sorry, deep sea? I'm sorry, Emily. Can we be sure that Schrodinger's cat had a question? I, the, you know. Did you observe it? I, I did observe the question. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so you did observe the question. All yeah. right. Okay. So there was a question. So there's confirmed maybe, existence maybe of Schrodinger's cat. Observing yeah. the question. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we aren't sure how fast this question is going. We aren't sure what's happening. Yeah. Listen. All we know is that you it, can only see one exists, of that at a time. But you can either see yeah. what the question said or where it was <laughs> headed in the chat. That's it. <laughs> As we are getting. <laughs> Just a little bit of a quantum humor for for all right. of you nerds and, out there. Well, a little, a defined packet of humor, a small, <laughs> a, a specific piece of humor, um, is uh, it, yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm sure we're queuing up all of the all of the particle physicists in the chat, being like, "That's not actually what Schrodinger meant." Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> no. Um, does Heisenberg have an uncertainty? Yeah, if Heisenberg asked a question, we'd be definitely very unsure of what's going on there. Okay, sorry, Emily, the question was? The question was, how are we going to have a deep sea exhibit without uh, the pressure of the deep sea inside of uh, those spaces? Um, which Great is a question. wonderful question. Uh, do you want to answer? Do you want me to answer? What, uh, you what did, you, you go for like... it. I've talked, I've talked a minute. I, I interrupted <laughs> you potentially answering it with my terrible physics jokes. No, but I do did. like it in the chat here. Uh, Schro Schrodinger's inquiry is both a question and, and an answer, which is very similar to what happens at, at conferences where it's just like, <laughs> it's less of a question, more of a comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I just had yeah. so many flashbacks to the American Chemical Society conferences that I would go to. Um but no, so uh, when you are talking about a lot of deep sea animals, uh, the big thing that you have to worry about uh, when you have changes in pressure um, is things exploding as you bring them up to the surface. <laughs> uh, let's just <laughs> get that out of the way real quick. Um, <laughs> so if you're talking about, you know, uh, even like some of the rockfish that we have at the aquarium um, that are used to living uh, deep down in the ocean, let's say 100 feet deep, um, you try and bring up one of those because it has an air bladder inside of it. Uh, the gases inside of that air bladder as it rises up to the surface are going to want to expand as pressure lessens. Um, and then you have fish that basically are just so, you know, <laughs> distressed by all this barotrauma that uh, you're, you're forcing upon them by bringing them up to the surface. You have, you know, their uh, stomachs basically protruding out of their mouths because the gas bladder has expanded so much, et cetera, et cetera, um, which is exactly what we don't want. Um, and so there are ways that you can collect animals and acclimate them to pressure up here at sea level um, so that uh, you don't have barotraumatized animals. Uh, but you also have a lot of animals that don't have any gas filled pockets inside of their body. So fish have those gas bladders. A lot of deep sea fish don't have a swim bladder uh, because they really don't need one. Um, but then you also have animals like this little sea pig hanging out down below our diver here. Uh, it doesn't have those same air pockets. It's not like us. We are a mammal just full, just chock full of gas filled chambers inside of our bodies from our lungs to our sinuses. Uh, it's a disaster when we try and change the pressure of the environment that we live in. Uh, but for a sea pig, that pressure really doesn't affect it at all. Um, one thing scientists have discovered is that uh, pressure does uh, affect certain protein folding, um, which is something that we're still learning about and, and learning how to care for those animals um, that experience that but you also have animals that that change in pressure doesn't affect them at all so um we do have uh some exhibits that they're um trying to figure out uh how to uh lower the oxygen levels in that is yeah. something that our husbandry team is working on right now shout out to matt wandell and our team of awesome aquarists who are trying to figure out that problem because beep, 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 beep. shout <laughs> out <laughs> <Matt Wandell. laughs> and the rest of the team and the rest of the team you're awesome <laughs> um but you know they're they're trying to figure out how to care for these animals that would normally be living in very um oxygen depleted environments um, which you're, you're basically, um, just by having a, a, an aquarium filled with seawater that's exposed to the air that we are breathing right now, um, is, is basically toxic to those animals. So they're trying to figure out different methods of trying to remove the oxygen from the water. There's, there's a big yeah. one and a little one and it's real cute is, right yeah. now. <laughs> 
That'll do. See, pigs. That'll certainly. do. Certainly. Um, adorable. Yeah. And um, Emily, everything you're mentioning there about that lowering of the oxygen uh, to keep these critters comfortable is something that we actually, we, we both got to see behind the scenes there with sea pigs that you're looking yeah. at right here. Um, yeah. one, one, of the, one of the most interesting facts about that that I learned is that when you take the oxygen out of water, uh, out of seawater, and when you're, when you're toying with that gas content, you can actually create water that is basically a magnet for gases, um, which was the way that Matt described it. So thinking about... Um, thinking about water that wants to hold on to oxygen as much as much as it does especially because it's colder water you might know that um the warmer liquid is the less gas uh stays in it um, which is why when you heat up a uh when you have a, a very cold pepsi um it it stays or or any soft drink we're not sponsored uh <laughs> any soft drink uh in there you know that the coldness the the bubble stay in there you warm it up a lot more comes out um and so the cold water and removing the oxygen makes this like hyper it's like hungry, hungry for, for gases, hungry, hungry, uh, water for, for dissolved, uh, gases. And of course being here on land, that can be rather complicated. Uh, Emily, there's a ton of questions that just, there's so, in chat. so many YouTube questions. chat is broken. YouTube chat um, is broken. So, yeah. I saw that. So th things are, things are coming, <laughs> things are coming up, <laughs> uh, pretty, pretty slowly there. So apologies if you're over on, on the YouTube chat. Um, um, yeah, if you if you are over on on YouTube and um, it's broken and you have questions, uh, pop over to Twitch for those questions yes. in the chat there for us, um, and we'll try and answer. Um, we did have a very important question um, from Four Mutant Fish uh, yep. <laughs> that it, when we were talking about uh, barrow trauma and, and stuff, um, is that what happens with the blobfish? Um, and really, no. Uh, basically, the blobfish looks super weird up here at the surface simply because it doesn't have the water suspending its body and supporting its body. Um, that because its body is massive and and kind of floppy, that if it's not in water, um, the, the pressure around it is just too too much up here at the surface, and it just yeah. kind of pancakes out. <laughs> Exactly. So yes, um, there is a lot of blobfish uh, slander, uh, libel uh, going on on the internet where we, <laughs> we look at photos of blob skull pins and we just say, man, you've had better days. Um, but you would be looking rather deflated too if the entire support structure for your body yeah. was removed. So yeah, um, uh, yeah like, like you're saying there, Emily, blob skull pins look fantastic. They look amazing uh, yeah, when they're the on water. the seafloor. Beautiful. underwater with the yeah. water holding up their body <laughs> where they yep. need to be it, it's kind of the same reason as uh you know we're we're hanging out here in these whale falls right now these massive massive whale falls of uh you know baleen whales um the largest animals to ever live on our planet and there's a reason for that the largest animals to ever live on our planet are in the ocean uh, because there is no way an animal that large would be able to survive up here on land without the water helping to support its body so um this, that's right yeah water and very, that is, very important living medium for for big animals it is and that's also one of the main issues with a bait uh with a whale washing up on the beach um is that they they mm -hmm. often um are not able to survive under the weight of gravity so yeah. you know gravity uh is is a major thing that a lot of animals <laughs> don't deal with so um uh, the gravity of the situation with a blobfish when it's on the surface is that it no longer has its support network, uh, its support yeah. structure that it that it needs. You know, so uh, everybody needs somebody to baleen on <laughs> out there. Uh, and I believe I covered five different puns across different I am, species. I, I will, yeah, I will slowly make make our way through those puns here. Uh, um, um, so yeah. to, gravity, uh, sorry, thou art a heartless fish. Yes. What was that? Gravity, thou art a heartless fish. <laughs> Let's get that on a shirt. <laughs> uh, that's an awesome deep sea shirt, especially if we ever have blob sculpins. Uh, for questions over, <laughs> oh, we got so many questions coming in over on YouTube all at once. Um, one thing, real quick deep sea isopods. Yes, giant isopods are one of those yeah. animals that we're looking into. Uh, Emily, buddies. have you I'm ever so seen a giant excited. isopod? I have. I've pet a giant isopod before. What? You've pet I have, a giant isopod? I've pet a giant isopod. I've pet two giant isopods before at the what? aquarium. Yeah, Some wait. people haven't even pet one. 
I know. Uh, yeah, some people haven't even seen one, Pat, in, in real life. Um, That's right. Oh, I love them. I love them so much. They're just these adorable little horror bugs from the deep. And um, yeah, they can be, uh, you know, from white to this like beautiful pale lavender color. Um, and they are these incredible little scavengers of the deep sea and uh, will eat meals few and far between as many animals in the deep sea are, are wont to do when you live in an environment when you don't know when your next meal is going to be. And um, they're basically just deep sea roly poly bugs. Um, and they're amazing. I love them. I love Emily. them so much. Yeah. Emily, what did they feel like? They, I mean, <laughs> deep sea roly poly isn't isn't far off. They they feel yeah. like um, a, a a crab that's wearing, you know, a, a a suit of of armor shaped like a, a roly poly. You know, it's it's very yeah, it's very hard on its back. Yeah, the uh, yeah, it's... having also touched the deep <laughs> these deep sea roly polies, I must say that the experience is far more in the act of like yeah, being, <laughs> I touched being one near being near <laughs> yeah, one if, of them. If you've been uh, at like a as... <laughs> at like a crab boil before, it's it's not right? far oh. off of like touching a, the crab shell or yeah. Yes, as far as far as a tactile <laughs> experience, it's nothing to write home about. But it's it's about it's about but the it's experience the of principle. interacting with uh, these yeah. deep sea roly polies and. <laughs> <laughs> These deep sea roly polies are one of those examples of deep sea giganticism that you yeah. may have heard about, yeah. um, where sometimes things get a whole lot bigger in the deep sea than getting a whole lot smaller and kind of goes back and forth. But large things tend to need less energy um, than uh, a smaller thing. So like an elephant's energetic needs per uh, amount of elephant that there is is a lot less than a shrew that might be running around little mammal a little mouse trying to grab up a little food so smaller you tend to be um the more energy you need if you are say uh, a mammal um to, to keep that thing going but uh um, the larger you get the less energy per per amount of animal uh you tend to need um but also a lot of stuff in the deep sea is very very tiny uh, for opposite reasons of there not being a whole lot of food. Not and if a you're a cold-blooded fish, um, then you don't need that same internal... Um, you need you don't need to power that same internal furnace that a mammal does. So anyway, there's big stuff in the deep sea. There's also small stuff in the deep sea. And yeah. giant isopods, one of our favorite. They are charismatic mega minor fauna. Mega minor Ooh. fauna. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Everybody's got... All the linguists in the chat are going to be mad at me, Emily. <laughs> I, I know. Um, but uh, Kawaii Cookie over on Twitch, uh, keeping us on task here, Pat, are arthropods oh. and isopods related at all? Uh, yes, um, mm -hmm. isopods are arthropods. So uh, right. isopods fall underneath that phylum arthropoda right there. Uh, segmented so. limbs, where you at Ooh. in chat? Sound off. Do you got segmented limbs? Let's see you. You're one of the largest <laughs> phyla on the planet. Who do we got in here? Sound off in the comments if you have <laughs> Cross your torso. Hope to tell son. Yo. <laughs> oh gosh. Emily, I don't know if I don't know if that I don't know if we've got too many arthropods <laughs> tuning in. Oh, apparently all of our followers are arthropods. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> I mean, as far as life on Earth goes, makes sense. It makes sense that most of our followers are arthropods. <laughs> oh, your boy Splendence over here. I have no bones. <laughs> <laughs> We're finding out so much about our chat by asking the arthropods to sound off in the comments. We've got another <laughs> arthropod uh, <laughs> running around beneath the um, uh, beneath the horseshoe crab. Wait, what? Really? Hold on, I wasn't paying attention. We ha we ha well, we had one of our crabs running around under the oh. under the horse crab. <laughs> um, no, I was too distracted because I was I was uh, I was just gonna say, Pat, if we have checking all for of segments the, in uh, your limbs. yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Do, uh, do I? Um, <laughs> you just found you just found a, sh a molt of yourself next to your chair. Just like, oh, dang, whoa. Uh, no, but if you're having all of the arthropods in our chat sound off, does that mean that it's an arthropodcast? 
It's currently an Arthur podcast. That's right. Yeah, I um, had to. You know I had to. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Okay. Oh, people are huge fans of, of uh, segmented, segmented critters. Um, hold on. There was another... There were another few questions that we saw here in the chat that I want to get to. Uh, Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. We got Ari asking this question. Um, This is actually a very interesting question, uh, Emily, is um, what kind of microorganisms might we expect to find down uh, this far uh, in in the deep sea? Are there microorganisms of note? Uh, Pat, right now we would be swimming in a a soup of uh, detritus raining down from the sea surface <laughs> called marine snow. And That's pardon right. me. <coughs> oh, Emily, how I'm you sorry, doing? I'm back. No, I'm not. <laughs> She's not back. Everybody, Pat, you took Emily's breath me. away with that question about microorganisms. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, Emily, give some give some love in the chat. All right, I'll I'll just take this one real quick here. Emily's gonna go get some water, I'm sure. Uh, so, um, yeah, microorganisms in the deep are absolutely everywhere, uh, and in particular, you have the marine snow that is uh, going down from the sea surface which is the leftover detritus of uh, various organisms detritus being a fancy word for poop scales um dead bodies etc and so there's a very very vibrant microbial community lots of bacteria lots of very small single-celled organisms in the in the ocean generally from the surface all the way down into the deep and so uh, in that marine snow are large amounts of microbes that will eventually make their way down to the deep sea floor where they might be uh eaten by something but also in the sediment there's going to be a whole lot of uh, microorganisms living in that mud and then also in front of you here we've got uh, some coral we've got a bunch of other organisms in this deep sea part of abzu where um, there are the black smokers for example Um, and uh, the black smokers are those deep sea vents where you have superheated water coming up uh, filled with uh, little filled with chemistry from the earth's crust and mantle there um, and around there are huge chemosynthetic communities, chemosynthesis being the uh, being similar to photosynthesis in that there's uh, energy and organic matter that is being made instead of using sunlight and water and carbon dioxide, uh, as you as you probably all know, uh, instead using sulfur uh, to do basically a similar type of chemical reaction that ultimately leads to uh, organic matter. Um, and I believe I've I've chatted long enough for for emily to be back emily how you doing over there are you back no not yet okay no worries um uh ignoring the pressure and temperature of the deep sea would the bacteria down there be dangerous for a swimmer you know it's one of those things about uh bacteria that it really depends you know what it's doing what it's up to um in um in in that environment whether or not it's a virulent type of bacteria or not you know the ocean is filled with bacteria that are photosynthesizing those are known as cyanobacteria or blue green algae you may have heard um and uh, those are not going to cause much of an issue uh, for you but there can be other types of bacteria out there um i don't know emily are you muted over there how you doing she might be muted I'm gonna text her real quick, everybody. Yes, this is the life of streaming. We're 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 doing some professional streaming things right now. Let me see, Emily. Are you there? Um. All right. Well, I'll just keep answering questions here in chat. No, we're 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 back. We're we're back. Okay. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <sighs> We've got. I got. I got some water. I got the kettle on. We're we're making some herbal tea. We're we're gonna survive. We're gonna make it through this. Okay. No, we were just we were just trying to, <laughs> we were getting getting a little worried. Um, uh, 
Yay! Hey, everybody, let's get some. Oh, let's get some oh thank dubs. you for the welcome backs, chat. Let's get some dubs, some welcome backs to Emily. I'm here to save you. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, no, it was about to just be me talking about microbes <laughs> ad infinitum. So, as, uh, as, as our little diver buddy just sat there and hovered above this crab. Um, <laughs> since you, you can't know, I was, control I was getting what... <laughs> ready to talk about, like, you know, light diffusion out of that headlamp and, like, different things, but... <laughs> oh. Emily, we're just mainly glad that that you're okay. Oh, Yay. yeah, I'm I'm back. I'm here. I just got Ooh. really excited about deep sea microbes and microorganisms, Pat. I just well, I talked about the microbes in the I talked about the microbes that are in the marine snow, and then talked about um, uh, that sinking down into the deep, and then there being de uh, decomposing. Uh, bacteria down there that are helping uh, feast upon dead whales and carcasses and stuff and then also talked about some bacteria chemosynthetic oh bacteria around the yeah. deep sea hydrothermal vents so that's where we wrapped up if you feel yeah. like adding anything to that no i was just gonna say um what we're hovering above right now in game i know they kind of made it look like there is a uh, like seagrass or, or some kind of algae growing on the bottom here and it, yeah. in real life this would not be the case this would just be like uh, this the microbial sludge stew. Yeah, yeah, just we'll call, mud and microbes. We'll call microbes. everything in front of you there. That's a that's a bacterial field. <laughs> yeah, right there. this yeah, is like just a, a mat of, of microbial magnificence. Um, I had to go for the alliteration there, but yeah. Oh no, that was great. <sighs> I wish we had a I wish <sighs> we had an alliteration button. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I just got your text too. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good, dude. Okay. <laughs> I'm here. Cool. I'm back. All right. Good. Solid. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> no worries. Um, oh, uh, hey, cool dude, 2058. Thanks for the suggestions uh, around uh, adult white sharks there. Um, yeah, you can send, uh, if any of you folks out there want to send an email to the aquarium, that's equarist at mbayaq.org. And we can direct you to where you need to go. I'll put that in the chat. Okay. Oh, um, hey, Emily, how many, a uh, question from Aiden over on YouTube. How many types of marine microbes are there? Oh, my God. Name all of them now. Go. Uh, we'll wait. Alphabetically. Yeah. All right. <laughs> A. We, no, because we, we only we only have we only have so much longer, and we need to get through all of them. That was the question. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> buckle buckle up, everybody. Strap in. <laughs> this is gonna be the rest of the stream for the next <laughs> three days. <laughs> exactly, my life is dinosaur themed. Oh, you're a marine biologist. Name all the microbes. <laughs> uh, no, there are thousands. A lot. Of them, I actually uh, one of my professors in college studied uh, viruses in the ocean, and just like the number of viruses there are in there is insane. Um, you know, it's yeah. It's, so just yeah. every every little microscopic thing in in the deep sea would would be an enormous list to have to go through. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, it's one of those things too where uh, our ability to discover microbes keeps increasing, and so I remember uh, this was actually something I I believe that this was Sylvia Earle's PhD or maybe her postdoc or something, but um, Sylvia Earle was somebody who helped uncover the fact that there's one type of uh, cyanobacteria, um, one genus, uh, Prochlorococcus, um, that could be responsible for up to a fifth uh to a, a a fifth yeah of the oxygen that we have uh on the planet uh at any given time um just that one just that one genus was uh was part of her part of that research now obviously a lot of that oxygen stays in the ocean some of it goes up into the atmosphere but um yeah one one fifth of the oxygen might have been made by uh could be on our planet could be made by one type of microbe and that was discovered i think in the 70s or the 80s when we finally had the ability to find these they were so small um i believe prochlorococcus is the smallest theoretical um or the smallest photosynthetic organism that is theoretically possible in terms of how much uh surface area and volume you have to be able to do the 
um, to do photosynthesis. So it's incredibly abundant and we didn't even know that it existed uh, until like 50 years ago, basically, yeah. um, because we just couldn't find it. Yeah. So um, yeah, lots of microbes out there. Yeah, you know, we're, we're saying microbes uh, for for many things, but uh, the Prochlorococcus is actually a, a picoplankton because it's so small, Pico. which is Pico just plankton. such a fun word, picoplankton. Uh, and I mean, if I had if I had my pick a plankton, it would also be <laughs> Prochlorococcus. They're also very good at playing peekaboo. Pe oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. Uh, that was a good one, Emily. Well, I, I, uh, I, 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 on that note, Pat, I'm going to go pour my tea. <laughs> the the water is boiling. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'll be right, All right back. Okay. All right, everybody. It's uh, it's your boy, Pat, hanging out here uh, <laughs> while Emily makes some tea. It's tea time over here. Um, uh, yeah, if if a Prochlorococcus sneezes, that's, of course, uh, a Pikachu. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, we're hanging out right now uh, above this whale fall. I believe it's a blue whale based off of the the lore of Abzu so far. Those are Humboldt squid there in the background. You can see them flashing that white and red color and then eating. Uh, um, they love to eat hake um, here in the Monterey Bay. So hake, H-A-K-E, uh, -E, that type of fish. You can Google that one. Um, is a commonly uh, commonly eaten type of uh, fish that Humboldt squid enjoy. Uh, we've also got goblin sharks going by. Looks like maybe some fang tooths, some uh, viper fish, uh, um, some angler fish. This is very, this is, I mean, looking a lot like what we would love to be able to show everybody in our new Into the Deep exhibit. Uh, this amazing amount of critters there in the deep sea. Uh, this view right now is probably not the density of organism that, that truly exists out there in the wild, but um, it is the same types of organisms that we would see out there uh hagfish yes hagfish oh we did a flippy flippy that means that emily is back i'm back awesome yeah um yeah hagfish slime eels uh are oh it's cool how the fish respond to your light too when you shine it on them like yeah. that um uh, oh uh let's see we got wandering falcon mentioning i think the joint genome institute had looked at genetics of bacteria live in the deep sea hydrothermal vents they're discovering huge amounts of deep sea diversity yep yeah. absolutely i think yeah. you know the more we're going to look in the deep sea the more our minds are going to be blown there are probably you know uh in the deep sea we're always discovering new animals always discovering new interactions uh most of the time we're just like looking at an animal and trying to figure out what it is and we barely even know what it does so all of those cool stories that you may have heard about different animals um doing different things out there all the cool stories any fun fact about animals that you have we basically don't have any of those stories from any of the animals that we are finding in the deep sea because uh we don't know anything about them um and we've just basically just scratched the surface there with them um uh emily can i share an animal fact? Ooh, we're doing a little bit of meditation yeah I, well, Here's this, an this this would have been helpful when I was uh, away to have, to just put it on this because it it automatically switches. What, what no, you're it was fine. At, we had a good so. time. I'm glad. Had a good time. Look at that. Look at that beautiful Humboldt squid. Look, it's safe and is on the right side too. It is. Yeah. Um, Emily, you know we haven't mm -hmm. talked about this on on the stream recently, but uh, mm -hmm. shout out to ourselves for dragging <laughs> Apple on Twitter <laughs> so much that they that they changed. Uh, that they changed the squid emoji to having the the squid siphon on the right side. So uh, <laughs> that is our indelible mark on uh, global culture is on, uh, yeah. Apple's squid emoji is correct because we made fun of them on Twitter. Sorry, <laughs> but we got yeah. what we wanted. <laughs> so it's perfect. It the works. squid emoji now looks it good uh, in iOS. Look at that goblin shark doing its thing. Awesome. Little, that was us. Remember that, Emily? That was a, good a little time. snack. Yeah. That was us. That, Sorry, Apple, if you're watching. It goes on our resumes really right there. Yeah. <laughs> didn't mean for that to go as big as it did. But hey, now we've got uh, suction cups on the octopus emoji and the squid siphons in the right place. Uh, goblin sharks. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Uh, deep another sea another shark. one of those animals in the deep sea with a spoopy name. So we have our uh, <clears throat> zombie worms, our goblin sharks, our ninja lantern sharks, our... <laughs> yeah. Look at that. If there was ever a snoot to boop, that's one of them. That is one of them. 
That is a boopable <laughs> snoot. That is a large... It is swimming, interestingly. It's That's very true. You normally don't see sharks swimming it's... in that motion. No, yeah. it seems like it's trying to get away from your light almost, or it's trying to catch that fish. And I think it's, doing it's trying every to catch it the can. insanely large Tomopterus worm looking thing <laughs> in the game. Yes. Oh, that's right. We have the Tomopterus worms here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yep. So they, oh, okay. it even Emily. says it. It even says it right in the corner that this is supposed to be tom Tomopterus. This yeah. is so cool. We just did the talk yesterday with yeah, Rob Sherlock from Ambari. Yeah, if you want some good Tomopterus facts, uh, check that stream out. Rob Rob had some pretty fun things to say about Tomopterus worms. That's right. Yeah, these worms uh, are really interesting to bioengineers because they can reverse direction. They can sit motionless. They can swim forward. They can stop and reverse on a dime and do things that no robot has been able to do so far. Um, and Tomopterus worms also have yellow bioluminescent goo that they uh, shoot out there. Yeah, head over to um, head over to our Twitch VOD or to YouTube, and you'll be able to see our talk with Rob Sherlock. It was really, really, really fun yesterday. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah. Magnus oh, the Radical, question. thank you so much. That is yeah. such a kind note there. Um, there was a very important question, uh, though, Pat, uh, from uh, uh -huh. from Mechmas, can yes. Mola Mola breach? And I know it's one of our favorite things to talk about. Can they breach? Yeah. Well, being the best fish that has ever existed, of course, of course a mola can breach. Of course. Of course they can uh, breach. Whoa, hagfish in the midwater. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to go in the deep sea anymore. <laughs> That's terrifying. You do not want hagfish in the midwater, everybody. Listen, if your planet has hagfish in the midwater, it's time to move. Um, uh, hopefully those are about to swim back down and eat something else. That's very scary. Yes, sunfish can jump out of the water. We've seen it happen, Emily, uh, and I have both seen it happen at the aquarium. Uh, and it's also happened in the wild. You can look it up. There are stories of molas crashing upon people's boats. Uh, <laughs> there have been injuries associated with breaching uh, glorious molas trying to uh, have their moment in the sun. Fish. And, uh, yeah, I've seen a mola breach at the aquarium where it just kind of decided one night that uh, it wanted to <laughs> wanted to just let off some steam. And I don't know if you have a friend who, you know, wanted to do some hardcore parkour <laughs> just randomly out of nowhere and then jumped off of a table. It's kind of what the, the vibe was, the energy was with the sunfish where it just was swimming normally and then just decided, dur, dur, ah, jumped out of the water, splash, surprise everybody. And, uh, yeah, Emily, I, I don't know if you feel like sharing your your molar breaching story again, but uh, I, I can good... always share my molar breaching story. There are over a hundred people watching right now, and there's a chance that about ten percent of them have not heard this story yet. Yeah, uh, um, but no, my my molar breaching story is a magical moment um, where uh, a, a mola at the aquarium decided to bless. Um, bless a, a tour that I was leading. It was a romance tour uh, back in the day when I was on the uh, programs team uh, at, at the aquarium. Uh, Pat and I both, uh, we used to lead tours and um, on this particular romance tour, uh, a young gentleman was uh, getting ready to propose and uh, was going to do it in front of our open sea exhibit. So as we entered the room, uh, you know, talking about the exhibit and everything, we approach the window and all of a sudden, as uh, this man is getting down on one knee, the mola mola inside of the open sea exhibit <laughs> turned its snoot up towards the surface and just with a couple of flicks of its fins just propelled itself right up and out of the water and landed and, and just did this massive breach inside of the exhibit and I, it was the first time I had ever seen a mola breach, and um, it was just it, it was just blessing the 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 union of of these two people here. Um, uh, the good news is that uh, the 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 young gentleman's uh, significant other did say yes. Um, of well, course, you, you kind of have that. to. Yeah, you kind of have to after that. Uh, <laughs> if you didn't. Um, then, then you did not deserve that mola breach there, Pat. I just saw th those were 
Those were spotted those were ratfish. Spotted ratfish. Yeah, those were chimeras. Hold on. Chimeras. Yeah, let's get let's go see I'm some trying, chimeras. Okay, I'm just gonna we're gonna back out of this here because we need to swim around and find those we, chimeras. We Where are chimeras. you? Where are you, chimeras? Where are you at? We have not seen um, you. Oh, so uh, lick the cow happy. Uh, he has to answer your question. Uh, no, the bacteria in the deep sea are not going to be dangerous to a swimmer as far uh, as far as we know. Obviously, I wouldn't like, you know, rub deep sea muck in your face uh, just to see what happens. But um, no, you, you'd be fine there. Um, yeah. Don't go like eating, you know, spoonfuls of, of deep sea muck. But you yeah, know. you're you're probably fine. You're going to be okay. um, but yeah, so mola molas are a deep sea critter that will dive down in, into this world as well. But they they can breach, uh, as you were mentioning there, Emily. What we're looking right now um, for our ratfish uh, or rat tails, I forget. So grenadiers are a type of deep sea fish that are called rat tails. Yes, rat tails. Um, and grenadiers are a really really awesome fish, but they are not a uh, rat fish which is also known as a chimera um or as you folks out there may have heard of it referred to as a ghost shark so that's another spoopy type of uh of critter that we have in this particular part of the abzu uh world where ghost sharks are uh, a type of they're a type of shark they're a cartilaginous fish but they're very very interesting they've got sort of a frankensteiny looking face where they have lateral lines sensory lateral lines that uh that run along their body that allow them to feel pressure in the water oh there they are yeah. nice nice it's by all the uh, danger pyramids which <laughs> which uh -oh. is why we didn't uh, spot them before i'm gonna get shocked for this here it's gonna be worth it it's gonna be worth it okay no we yeah. made it we made it no you're we all did good it. but so those those uh chimeras there uh they would not swim in a school as far as i know but um no. they no. often look very frankensteiny like they've been stitched together because their lateral lines and their sensory structures all along their body um uh yeah make it look like they're like they're pieced together in different parts yeah. um and my favorite fact about uh <laughs> about ratfish, Emily, is that they have head claspers. That's true. Oh my gosh, I had forgotten about that. Yeah, so um, for those of you out there who are uh, wondering what a clasper is, a clasper is a way to tell the male and female uh, sharks apart. Typically in say like a ghost shark or a great white shark, um, the claspers are around the pelvic fins and look like little sausages that extend towards the tail. And those are useful basically as a sperm funnel when they are mating. Um, because the jaws and normally um, normally the sharks are biting onto the female to be able to uh, hold on and, and use their claspers to, to make more sharks. In the case of a rat uh, fish, a chimera, a ghost shark, they are not really able to bite onto the females very effectively. They have a fused upper jaw. And so the way that they hold on to the female is with uh, basically a little like Velcro like hook at the end of their uh, head clasper, which look is pretty much in the same position as an anglerfish lure. And that comes out forward and grabs onto the female so that they're able to mate um, to mate with each other. Uh, so head claspers is, um, yeah. And I believe that's how it works. <laughs> I've been very confused as to how it is that head claspers truly function. But my understanding is that they're basically a grapple, a grappling hook on the face of the shark. <laughs> There's your deep sea imagery there you for go. you. There you go. Uh, Sorry, just taking a sip of my tea. Hashtag not sponsored, um, but uh, just enjoying some nice, delicious yeah. herbal tea over here. Um, excellent, Pat. Should we like? I don't. I don't know if we should like try and progress in this game at all, or if we're we're chill, just hanging out here. I mean, there's so many different animals in this part that are so relevant to. <laughs> these are relevant to my yeah. interests. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um but uh yeah i mean uh, up to the up to the gaming community out there watching if you felt like uh moving us forward let us know um 
But yeah, just so, so fascinating to be here with chimeras, whale falls, exploding murderous pyramids of doom. Um, yeah, really just an immersive experience. Exactly. Exactly. One day we will make it away from the whale fall, and that is not today. Um, yeah, Emily, I don't know. Uh, however long you feel like feel like going, we got fresh tea, so. Uh, yeah, I've got a fresh cup of tea with a little lemon in it. We already, did we explore for every beacon? I know we did I, one. I think that we did. I think that we did a couple of them. Because that one's definitely... <laughs> um, Faye SSB is asking a lot of very specific gaming questions. Uh, I believe as as a joke <laughs> about uh, we, we about hope. which we yeah hope. which oh no uh, Emily which one of the sharks in this game has the or which one of the saltwater animals in here has the highest DPS do we know <laughs> uh, no I, I believe we don't know any of those things yes yeah <laughs> I know it's a joke there Faye <laughs> but I was mildly confused I was like oh wait hold on. Yes, the basking sharks got buffed on the last patch. Yeah, we need to we need to nerf those uh, those pyramids. Uh -huh, I've got references. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, I don't know, Emily. Do you feel like proceeding out from the deep sea environment that is pretty much our our entire upcoming deep sea exhibit? Or uh, well, uh, we just don't know what's beyond this. Every place that we have gone so far has just been one delight after the next. So, haha! -ha. Hey, you did it, <gasps> Anglerfish! Oh my goodness, those are legit. Yeah. Emily, how let's how talk about could we have fish. almost forgotten these little buds? How could Couldn't we have almost missed them? Um, all of these that we're looking at right now are all female angler or fish little little squad of ladies that just came out of that portal there um, and we know that because the males of this species are basically just uh, glorified parasites uh, they're much much smaller and uh, <laughs> they you took too much glee saying that <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> I'm, I, kidding. I'm kidding I mean there there was part of me that was just like well most males of most species are glorified parasites. Like but, uh, Pat on this big screen who just sits here uh, just with a microphone and his screen's uh, on and doesn't have to deal no, with anything else. No, you're our favorite glorified parasite. I'm Patrick. just here to inject uh, marine science facts into the stream as, as needed. Very similarly <laughs> to how the male anglerfish is used as effectively... Uh, uh, testicles there to uh, yeah. flush the female with sperm when it when she so chooses. Yeah, so, when she wants um, to. Yeah, that is the most disgusting metaphor we could have had uh, possible. But <laughs> people will hopefully <laughs> never forget it <laughs> that the males are basically one big nose that try to find a female, latch on, bite down on the anglerfish that the goblin shark just, just ate in ate front of us. in front of me. Uh, <laughs> excuse and, me, uh, excuse me, sir. Excuse me. We were talking about that. <laughs> Hello. That, I mean, we should definitely name Hello. this game, this this basking shark the patriarchy because it just destroyed that beautiful, beautiful angler shark female doing her own thing. Um, but no, so the the male anglerfish essentially one big nostril finds a female, latches on, bites down, becomes fused with the female, and then is used for reproductive purposes when needed. Exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, and by fuses we mean fuses. Like he will literally. Yes. Um, fuse his entire circulatory system with hers um, is no longer eating he he doesn't have anything left he is just a, a testicle attached to this female angler yep. fish he is there as a little, little and like you mentioned Emily for a sperm. long time yep so, sorry <laughs> for <laughs> Sorry, no, Pat. What did I mention for a long time? No, no. Like, like you mentioned earlier, Emily, uh, people didn't know what male anglerfish yeah. looked like. They only ever yeah. found females until they noticed that the little <laughs> ones attached were the males. That those weren't just weird fins hanging yeah. off of them. So wasn't a weird little. Like, and, and it won't just be like one male attached to a female either. Sometimes she'll have you mm -hmm. know multiple, um, you know, five, six, a dozen. 
of them attached to her because you know you're swimming around in the deep sea and you think about it um you know they don't have tinder down there uh, you're nope. out there in the largest fender. habitat yeah it's fender um <laughs> fender follow your nose find your soul mate um soul s-o-l-e um oh yeah no i was there <laughs> yeah <laughs> but but you know you're in the largest habitat on on earth in the deep sea and and you know you it's hard enough to find food down there let alone trying to find someone to mate with um and and make more of yourself with so um as a glorified parasite just a nose uh, you, you know you follow your nose and the first female that you find you just attach yourself straight to her listen um, the, the nose knows and we can at least say that certain male angler fish do not have commitment issues in any shape or form in fact they are fully committed <laughs> they are fully committed it is they the female who's just like no nah. and choose to live vicariously and vivaciously <laughs> through the <laughs> It's the female who's just like, you know what? I'm I'm not quite ready. I want to do a little bit more living right now before mm -hmm. before uh, we reproduce. So yeah, you just hold on there. Right. Oh. No, and the male is just like, you know what? Your personality is big enough for the both of us. And then, <laughs> yeah. Just... <laughs> uh, uh, but Pat, uh, Pat, do yeah. you want to talk about your favorite thing on anglerfish? The little yes. Yeah. I was trying to stay with her there, but she's she's being ev evasive. Well, she, you know, uh, are you able to, you can't turn the light on and off on, on you, can I you? I don't no. think so. I'm pressing all no, the yeah. buttons and I can. No, that's totally fine. Um, yeah. Uh, my favorite part about uh, anglerfish is that um, they're called that because they have that bioluminescent lure that's at the end of that stalk there. And that bioluminescent lure has bacteria inside of it that are doing the glowing for the for the anglerfish. And so they, uh, a lot of anglerfish have the ability of actually closing up that lure to completely disguise themselves. They can put skin and hold that over the, the sack and then they can pull that back to reveal the, the glow. And what I just discovered yesterday with you live on stream with Rob Sherlock, Emily, is that that they lure look so cool. at the end can't, it might, um, for some of the species, they'll mimic what looks like uh, an ostracod or a type of crustacean that another fish might eat. So the lure itself is not just glowing, because in the deep sea, stuff that's glowing could just as easily be food or a predator. They actually mimic, very similar to like how an orchid uh, mimics um, the bees um, or the, the other pollinators there um, that, that's going for, or um, the... Um, there's that one clam that has a part of its body that looks like worms so that the fish will bite down on it and then the clam um, or the mussel can uh, get its uh, its eggs onto the fish, which is how it completes its life cycle. So lots of different types of, um, of mimicry in nature in, in these different lures for different purposes. And I just found out yesterday that the lure of an angler fish can look like the prey of the other organisms. I, I had no idea. So go check out the Rob Sherlock uh, video. But this is all to say that the anglerfish lure is definitely my favorite part of the anglerfish. And it has a really beautiful name. The lure of the anglerfish is called an esca. E-S-C-A. And esca is actually what I called my underwater camera. And if I had a child, I would pause it to, uh, <laughs> to the other parent. Uh, Eska would be uh, a really, a really cool name. So Eska is that is that um, lure at the end of the anglerfish stock, and it, the Eska is at the end of a modified um, dorsal fin, which is known as the ilium. So the ilium at the end of the Eska. So Eska is my favorite part there. And uh, we just found that out yesterday, Emily. Like yeah. I've been, I've, I've been loving Eskas forever, and never really. Uh, knew anything about the biomimicry or the, the mimicry happening there at the end. So that's pretty cool. Go check out our live stream that we did yesterday with Rob. It was so cool. It was. It was a lot of fun. Well, Emily, I, I mean, we covered most anglerfish facts there. Uh, oh, check out the Black Sea Devil anglerfish video by Ambari. Apparently, uh, from the chat over here, uh, maybe Melanocetus, um, the Black Sea Devil, the males don't stick to the females permanently. Interesting. Huh. I have not heard that. 
we'll ask the researchers for that paper. We can read all about it. Um, so that's awesome, Emily. Found some anglerfish. I mean, I, I feel like everybody, everybody ends up finding out about anglerfish at some point, whether they've seen Finding Nemo or not. But that is, you know, that that scary, uh, scary light in the deep sea there. Kind of the classic fish that uses bioluminescence in the, in, in the deep sea. One of those classic u usages as a lure to bring food over to them. Escape. Hey, Esco's right there in Escape. Thanks, Dory. I didn't even realize that. Thanks, Editor Deb. Um. Oh. This is a great question. Uh, and actually, there was another question from this user a little bit earlier. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, where is it? Um, well, uh, Wilderness Gay, you asked a question earlier in the chat that was, that was really, I can't find it right now. Ask us that previous question that you had as well while we answer this one. Uh, Emily, different depths create different biomes, but are there different biomes in the ocean at the same depth? I imagine temperature plays a big role. Um, you feel like answering that one? Sorry, Pat. I, I wasn't paying oh. attention again. No, no worries. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll take it. So um, Wilderness Gay had a question earlier that I can't find in the chat. Uh, Editor uh, Deb threw it in chat again there. How Editor Deb I... threw it in chat again. Yeah. Um, oh, perfect. Okay, yes. So, um, different depths create different biomes. Are there different biomes in the ocean at the same depth? I imagine temperature plays a big role. Uh, yes, so at the same depth, like on the deep sea floor, you can have a few different types of biomes depending on whether or not you're on the muck, um, on the vast, vast, vast continental, um, uh, or on the plains, basically, the, the deep sea abyssal plains. Uh, but then you can hit uh, seamounts, um, where it's rocky or maybe there's a lava flow or something. And so you're going to have uh, some place for animals to attach to. Uh, you might also have uh, cold seeps um, that might show up with uh, chemosynthetic communities at a certain depth. Um, and then obviously you can also, if you are at like say 5,000 feet deep and you're in a canyon, well, suddenly you can be 5,000 feet deep and be in the midwater. You can also be 5,000 feet deep and be uh, on the canyon edge. So yes, different biomes showing up in different areas. Temperature, like around uh, thermal vents, can be huge. Um, and also salinities, you can have uh, brine pools and other things that show up. So yes, definitely different biomes at different depths. And then the other question, uh, um, Emily, thank you, Mods, Editor Deb, and uh, Sarah for finding it. Uh, the other question for you, Emily, is uh, how would the headlights of the diver or the ROV affect behavior of deep sea animals? Um, is there a way that we can truly study them, observe their behavior without the lights? Uh, yeah, that was actually something we, we talked about yesterday uh, that Susan actually brought up about how uh, our lights and benthic siphonophores often don't get along, right, Emily? Yeah, yeah. So sometimes <laughs> um, animals can be so sensitive to lights that... Uh, in the case of the uh, the, di the dandelion siphonophore, um, yes. <laughs> sometimes if you shine your light on it, it just self-destructs, just explodes. <laughs> um, so, just uh, yeah, disintegrates. Just disintegrates. Uh, so very some animals, much like, very much like a like a Spider-Man in the Avengers. I don't <laughs> feel so good. <laughs> Uh, oh no um yeah so, so some animals very very sensitive to the light others not so much um for many of the the animals that we've been fortunate enough to uh to bring up to the surface <laughs> oh uh -oh. man i'm being chast uh -oh. i'm being chastised yeah I'm you sorry. are <laughs> i gotta leave <laughs> sorry well it's been it's been good having you pat uh <laughs> hey so you know um uh, like Thanos, we show up and now <laughs> everything must be in balance. Oh, Fewer boy. benthic siphonophores. Oh, boy. I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I did a terrible boy thing. You did a terrible boy thing. Uh, that's okay. You're our terrible boy. That's um, right. Don't you forget it. Yeah. Uh, but for some of the animals that we've been fortunate enough to uh, to bring up to the service um, and, and studying them up here at the aquarium uh, one of the ways that we can study them and 
kind of watch and see what they do is by using a wavelength of light that they can't see. Um, so for many animals in the deep sea, they don't see the color red. Uh, so we can shine red light on them and, and watch and observe them that way. Um, and then uh, we can also just shut our lights off in the deep and uh, watch the bioluminescence down there. Um, so, you know, that's always an option too. But uh, as of right now, there's, there's really no good solution to how do we watch these animals in situ uh, without, you know, shining a light on them that might affect that mm. behavior and and you know for for some of the animals um they really don't mind the light uh they they really yep. could care less that we have our lights on um but then you have you know things like like the dandelion siphonophore which just kind of overreacts to uh mm -hmm. the presence of light there um, right yeah no, and um, they, it's a really great question, especially as it relates to ROVs and other things, too. I, I've heard uh, deep sea researchers mention that the only things that we've filmed in the deep sea with ROVs are the slow, dumb and blind animals yeah. <laughs> and that they wish that they could turn the ROV around to see the thousands of species behind the ROV mm -hmm. being like, what is this thing? <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, there are very, there are many animals that we've only seen like once or twice, but we know that they're around. Uh, they just choose never to be seen. Um, because the ROV is, it's loud, it's bright. It's obviously very different than everything else, uh, around it. And so, um, that's, is part of the reason why we're working on different, uh, different technologies that would be quieter or, um, mm -hmm. or able to, to find these organisms. But yeah, it's a really great question. Um, so again, we've only, you know, seen the animals that really didn't mind being seen. Um, but we have done research on, on different, uh, animals with, uh, you know, uh, visual pigments similar to ours and it, it can be very blinding but uh, we've done research on them where uh, they they do recover uh, similarly to us you know if we had a bright light shining on us yeah. um, our vision returns after after a while so similarly um, there in case you were worried yeah I mean you also have things like time lapses that happen in the deep sea where yes you know yeah, 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 yeah. you have mm -hmm. one bright flash kind of captures the moment and then stops and then you can kind of puzzle piece those together to get a picture of what's really going on out there. Um, yeah. 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 Um, Oh, Emily, who would win in a race, a sea lily or a nudibrank? My I think the nudibrank's trying to eat the sea lily. So <laughs> it's definitely, uh, <laughs> it's definitely a lunch rush. <laughs> uh, my money would be on the sea lily. Okay. Yeah. I'd say yeah. so too. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, uh, so Ricky L is wondering, does the dandelion siphonophore have issues with bioluminescent light? Uh, yeah, so bioluminescent light is not, um, anywhere near as powerful as our big, as our big lights. Um, yeah. there's also a chance that the temperature is playing, uh, playing a factor there too. Um, but uh, but yeah no our our lights are far 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 more powerful and intense than um, than bioluminescent light so it's a good question. <gasps> oh, I've defeated I'm the not... pyramids. You defeated oh, the pyramids. Oh, if I knew it was that easy and that I could be swimming around with. <laughs> oh man. Oh the danger you done that from the start yeah oh, but oh i only guess it's one, one there's only one light on there. okay so i have to go find out where the other thing is what are these rooms? gotta get the other one um uh fiore i have not seen um the deep mediterranean uh but that sounds super cool i hope it's a bunch of french people hanging out on the seafloor for a month and how do i join <laughs> <laughs> Alors, salut tout le monde. Moi, c'est Patrick. On est sous la mer pendant un mois. Uh, oh, can giant isopods roll into a ball like uh, the trilobites did? I don't know. Emily, do you know if the if the if they're roly poly is enough to be roly polies? I don't think that it's quite roly poly enough. And I, I definitely, I mean, they're definitely articulated, so they could, in theory, kind of roll up. But not mm -hmm. as tightly as a roly poly. Yeah, very articulated. In, in fact, um, hearing them speak is just really, it's, it, it's incredible how articulated they are. <laughs> Sorry, it's terrible. Hey, there's our white shark friend. There's our white shark friend. Yep. 
Yep. Oh, uh, uh, are we about to see the sad part? <gasps> no. Oh no. Is this no. a sad part? Is this a sad part? I I hope so. You hope it's the sad part? I sorry. I said I don't hope so. You monster. Um. Ah, salut Sophie. Ouais, moi je parle français. Salut le Québec. Um. Emily, what fish do you feel like represents your personality the most? Is a question in chat. Oh, oh, which fish represents my personality the most? Yes. Um. <gasps> Nautilus, intense yeah, music. Nautilus. Oh Nautilus no, it music. is the sad part. Uh, oh. 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 Go, 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 buddy, go, go. No, shark friend. Oh. I will use my mom's strength. Use it. My mom fish strength. mom strength. Help shark friend. Oh. Let's help shark friend. Yay, shark friend. Look how smiley happy shark oh. friend is. Yay. Hey. <gasps> she okay? Best shark friend. I think she's okay. She's well, she okay off she right went. Now. Okay. Okay. Yay, we help shark friend. By the way, this is exactly what we <laughs> what we've worked on with our white sharks that we've had uh, on exhibit at the aquarium. In case you folks um, are aware, we had young white sharks at the aquarium from 2004 until 2011, and um, part of the work that we did was studying how much energy a young white shark needs to grow, and that helped inform people about how much uh, we needed to, uh, or helped in inform people out there uh, that we're trying to conserve these. Oh, got sperm whales. Apex. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, no, that was just wanted to make sure that you saw the sperm whales. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll just wrap up real quick. So we help. We um, we're working really closely with managers to make sure that there's less bycatch of white sharks out there in different uh, fisheries up and down the coast. And so what you saw just then was an evil pyramid uh, um, bycatching. <laughs> I'm sure it didn't mean to be that terrible uh, landing on our white shark friend. And so what you saw just there was. Some fisheries management, making sure that there's no bycatch of white sharks along the coast. We know that intimately. But now we're diving really far with a sperm whale, Emily. Oh, that giant squid right there doing its best to hide. Oh, <laughs> that's so cool. Come Look on. at it go. <laughs> yes. Archituthis. <gasps> I Emily, can you ride the squid? I have to remember which button I press to ride the things. Look at it! Oh, it's so cool. Not, no, that's my that's my spin button of excitement. Um, um, um. Emily is a giant squid. Oh, that's so cool. So, for anybody out there not who is unfamiliar with giant squid, Archituthis is one of the most. I mean superlative organisms in the ocean look at its eye emily <gasps> that eye as far as i know can be 30 centimeters across size of a dinner plate uh, i'm not sure what the longest uh giant squid is at this point but they can be over 20 feet long i believe oh almost 10 meters long with every part of them included and this is a feast for a sperm whale you may know about the battle of the whale versus the kraken um, these animals have teeth on their suction cups incredibly sharp beaks in the center of those arms um, that will leave massive scars on sperm whales and sperm whales are down there diving in backwards they didn't so mean cool. to spook it inked too did no, you see it's ink it oh ink. are we gonna watch okay okay what you doing sperm whale friend what you doing there friend are you here to nom? No, you're just swimming. Just okay. chilling. Uh, but yeah, the faces of sperm whales are uh, tell many a story of battling the kraken in the depths. Now, my understanding, Emily, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe that um, research shows that these giant squid uh, might be hanging out kind of horizontal like it is right now. And then with those two long club hooked tentacles dangling down below the body of the squid ready to be basically a, um, a trap door or like an iron maiden basically shutting down on, on a fish or a squid or something else that it's, uh, that it's feeling there. Um, and giant squid are also 
an animal that is highly, highly attracted to bioluminescent displays, in particular, a type of jelly that we have out here called a tola that has eight bulbs of bioluminescence that go around in a circle when it's being bothered by something. Um, and that was thought to be a burglar alarm uh, for when uh, something was bothering that jelly and researchers used a, a, um, a mimic of an Atola uh, warning display of that bioluminescence and it brought up a giant squid and they were able to film it for the first time alive by creating this fake call for help from a jellyfish in the deep. And that's just the coolest freaking thing. Yeah. Okay, I'm done nerding out over the giant squid, Emily. Don't You're, talk about giant squid. I mean, you are it's so cool. more than allowed to Look at it. at it. This is out there right now, Emily. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's, there's a good chance it's right out in the bay right now, Pat. Right. Like, there's thousands right there. of these. Like, I'm looking at them right now, but they're so far down. And this is a good example of an animal that we know lives in the Monterey Bay, uh, but that we have never filmed with an ROV. We found... Um, we found dead giant squid washed up now and again yeah. from Santa Cruz to Monterey. Uh, so we know it's out there. We know it's somewhere, but we've never seen this with our ROVs uh, because probably a little bit, a little bit smarter <laughs> knowing a large thing coming towards it uh, could potentially be food because sperm whales that come out here feed on them as well. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, yes. K or Aya. Yeah. Claps to grab its food. Yeah. That's part of the idea there that they have the dangling tentacles down below them with those clubs that they'll use to, uh, cause they're not as spring loaded as, um, as a, uh, as a humble squid. Look cool. at that sperm whale. <gasps> this is the largest toothed whale that you're currently riding on there. Emily, the largest odonto seat. Um, and it's missing its top teeth with only teeth on its uh, lower jaw that it uses to sandwich the giant squid below. In fact, it's so large, Emily, you can't even yeah, see its, it's face. Yeah, it's so large that I can't see its face. Oh, no. Oh, beans. Now, uh, sperm whales are called that because the front part of their head there has a massive um, oily uh, oil-filled uh, chamber called the spermaceti organ and in there is a oil that is um, thought to do a few different things one is that it may act as a buoyancy device for a sperm whale because um, it's thought that they might be able to transform that oil by uh, oh it almost got bit there squid friend oh. <gasps> you're riding the squid I am riding the squid Look at uh, it go. Emily, look at its fins. Flap. Look at it go. Oh, shoot. This is an epic gamer moment, if there ever was one. Uh, Thank you, Abzu devs. This is the coolest thing of all time. <laughs> this is what I would do if I could, Emily, is ride on the back of a giant squid. Of a giant squid. This is so cool. So it's fluttering there with, with its fins there in the background. It's also likely using its siphon for some jet propulsion there as we go. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's a there. there's a biodiversity thing um, that we saw. Yeah, it saw a couple of them. We're going to have to go pick them Sweet. out there. Um, it is doing flippy, flippy, flippy. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz fins. Um, but the... Uh, yeah, so the, uh, the spermaceti organ is thought to potentially be able to create a massive wax plug on the front um, by cooling down that, that oil, and then uh, that helps sink the whale down into the deep. And then when it's coming back up, it's thought that maybe they flush the front of the face of the spermaceti organ, uh, making the, the wax plug into an oil again, therefore increasing the, um, increasing the volume, decreasing the density, of the of the whale and helping it come back up to the surface because often they're diving down very very far uh over a mile holding their breath for over an hour to go down and grab um grab their squid meals oh and who do we have here emily <gasps> <gasps> oh no yes no yes emily i think we all have to say oh 
Opa, everybody. <gasps> this is the uh, white whale, as it were, for uh, many of our um, husbandry team, and in particular, John O'Sullivan, uh, who is one of our incredible uh, collectors um, out there in the wild who has helped us. <gasps> You're riding on an Opa. It By is the way, not you not happy about me riding on it. No, you would not be able to do this in the wild because Opa have an incredibly sensitive skin. Um, and so they're unable to, uh, they're really, really difficult to, to handle. And that's why we haven't had one at the aquarium. We've been doing work on them for a while. But Opa look very similar to a mola. They're not in the same group at all. No. Um, they just look very similar in terms of that, that shape. Um, and Opa, I believe, Emily, are the only confirmed full body endothermic fish. So they are the most mammal like as far as their um, body. They hold their body temperature above background for the whole for the whole part of them, not just in specific parts like their eyes or their brain or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 <gasps> yep. 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 Uh, that's so cool. That's incredibly cool. Um, I can't believe there's Opa in this game. Opa are absolutely gorgeous. And shout out if you do a Google search for an Opa photo, you'll probably find a photo um, by a friend of ours, Ralph Pace. Um, it's a photo off of uh, San Diego. If you find that photo, um, Ralph lives here uh, in, on the Monterey Peninsula. Does a lot of uh, does a lot of photo videography out here. But so if you see that photo of an Opa, it's probably Ralph's because it's like the best photo. <laughs> Of these things are so cool. Oh my goodness! Um, yeah, just wrapping up maybe on the on the sperm whale talk, the spermaceti uh, organ there. Yes, it, that oil was used for lots of different things. It burned uh, without smoke, so it was used in a lot of um, a lot of like street lamp applications. It was also very very good lubricant uh, before we had synthetic lubricants that replaced whale oil. Um, and uh, yeah, sperm whale is one of those very charismatic animals one thing maybe you don't know about sperm whales is that they only have their one nostril uh left nostril that they use to breathe in their right nostril is embedded within their uh their head case there um to help them make sound it's thought that that maybe they make such loud sounds that they're able to do a sonic shock a sonic boom that um that uh, freezes giant squid in place uh, and they certainly use uh, echolocation to find their meals in the deep and the, those echoes are made by uh, clicks and clacks of the right nostril embedded in the head of the of the sperm whale there so that's why they have such long tendons uh, that you should look at in inside nature's giants they those tendons that they use to open and close that left nostril that's at the front of the head like a dozen feet removed from where uh, the nostril tendon attaches there to the skull in the back. Emily, I've talked a lot. There's so many cool things in this new room. Okay, what, were we, what were we thinking going into a new room? There's Pat. so many. We're never going to leave this one. Now. Pat. Pat. <gasps> oh, I was looking at Twitch chat. I wasn't looking at the gameplay. <gasps> Pogo Nofferins. Oh my goodness. Look at them. Giant tube worms. I think these are Riftia tube worms if they were in the if they were part of our yeah, research in here. the Gulf of California. <gasps> Molly. Riftia tube worm. And these are uh if you're six feet um if you're six feet tall here in um in game with your fins there, Emily, these are life size. That's how big those oh, worms yeah. are. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Tell, tell us about them. Um, they're uh, amazing. I don't know. Oh <laughs> Stunned. Uh, yeah, no. So most of them, uh, you know, they live on the seafloor. They uh, oftentimes are most of the time they're found uh, near near hydrothermal vents, which in the case of the game, you can see the the hydrothermal vents. It is right over here. Hey, buddy. Hey, little hydrothermal vents, <laughs> hanging out. Um, uh, ooh, we can meditate uh, oh, we a can little meditate. bit later down here too. That's true. Should we meditate wow. now while we talk about Riftia? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, pressing X to meditate. <laughs> uh, oh, look, Medi blobfish. 
<gasps> There's our blob sculpin. Hey. Hey, hey buddy. Hey, everybody. Hatch. So, again, blobfish, they don't look like blobs <laughs> in their natural habitat. It's gravity. It's the gravity of the situation that's, t that's t pulling them down. <laughs> <laughs> As we all experience it. That's true. Uh... <laughs> Apparently I watch apparently I watch this this stream uh like someone in an exclusive party who's thrilled and amazed at every uh celeb who walks into the room. I'm gonna tell you, if I was at a party and these celebrities were coming in, I'd be nerding out even harder. I'd be going up and trying to get their get their autographs, especially a Humboldt squid. I can get that in ink, you know. Um <laughs> Oh my god. Oh oh Humboldt squid oh. got the fish before I could see what kind of fish it was. That's okay. Um. Wow. So Riftia. <laughs> yes. Who's this? The flabby, flabby whale whale fish. fish. A whale fish is in this. What? what? Okay. Shout out Abzu because flabby whale fish is a deep cut. Um, head over to uh, yeah. Amari's YouTube yeah. channel and you can see a whale fish uh, exactly like this. Um, they're called that because of the way that their head looks uh, similar to a whale. But um, what? A flabby whale fish made it into a game? That's the coolest thing ever. Oh, my God. Wow. That's that's a real deep sea cut. Right <laughs> that there. is a real deep sea cut right there. I'm kind of blown incredible. away. Because not like not a lot of people have heard of a flabby whalefish, Pat. No, like and... even even a lot of marine biologists like haven't no. heard of a flabby whalefish. No, we've got a so mole. The fact that they're, they're is Abzu in my here. house? What? Hey, <laughs> 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 that's uh, that's amazing. That's insane. I I'm sure that the the whalefish doesn't appreciate being called a whale and flabby, uh, but you know. <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, that is, ooh, oh, oh, okay. Hold, sorry, go back. Sorry, sorry, I can't go back. Oh, no, we can't. <laughs> I'm so okay. sorry. I so can't everybody, go back. everybody, everybody, let's 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 do a little test right now to see. Uh, whoa, that was a really cool viper fish going by a hatchet fish. Um, so can anybody in, look at the angler fish? I'm so sorry, it's just going pat. No, no, no. We should look at this angler fish for a while. Um, but very quickly <laughs> in the chat. Can you tell us how we know that that is not, in fact, a true moon jelly that yeah. we just saw? Yeah. Can anybody tell us in the chat how you know that that jellyfish that we just saw is not, in fact, what we would call a moon, a moon jelly, jelly yeah. that we have up here on the surface? Sound off in the comments while we enjoy <laughs> the, <laughs> the aggressive swim of the anglerfish female <laughs> going to smash some sea glass ceilings. <laughs> Look at her go. Moon jellies are pelagic. No, it's not it. Not from the moon. Nope. Because of depth, uh, that's part of it, but no, uh, not in this particular case because we take some uh, we take some liberties with depth here. It's not made of gelatin. No. Doesn't have the circles on its bell. Its bell shape. We're getting close. Doesn't have the markings on top. Just about. So we've talked about, because it has long tentacles, that could be, but uh, sometimes they have, they have the longer tentacles. One of the things that's missing on that particular moon jelly are the horseshoe markings of the gonads that are underneath the stomach portion or the gut portion of the jelly. Um, and the bell is crystal clear. So the fact that it's not opaque lets you know that you're looking at a hydro medusa type. If it is opaque, if you if the light doesn't if you can't see basically through the bell to the other side, then you're dealing with a different type of jelly, a hydro medusa instead of a skyphazone, which is what a uh, moon jelly is. So opaque mesoglia, the middle jelly of the bell, is a really good tell to know that you're dealing with um, a skyphazone and not a hydro medusa. And then the other thing is you can see that there are lots of striations along that bell. Those would be much more like the um the striations that you would find on aquiora the uh crystal jelly and those are 
um, radial spokes, basically, of gut material as opposed to the four-leaf clover that we're used to seeing there on a moon jelly. So that's how you can tell just by looking at it that it is, in fact, not a true moon jelly. Uh, and Emily, I do really appreciate how hard you're trying to get to the jelly. I'm trying. I'm, I... <laughs> I realize it's not letting you get there. No. That's totally fine. That's totally fine. We can just hang out with this Opa. Oh, oh sorry. No. Sorry. No, we can't. Nope. No, we can't. <laughs> Here, Nopa. I can go. There you go. <laughs> oh, let's look at this Opa for a hot sec. Look at it. That's so there you cute. go. If you wanted a warm blooded fish, everybody, this is it. The Opa. <laughs> this the is what only... you get. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, we've got we've got somebody saying opa gundam style <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, oh, opa <laughs> uh related to oarfish did we mention that oh no yeah opa king, related, king of the herring to or oarfish yeah king king of the herring that's awesome Oh, if you look into a Hydro uh, Medusa's eye, do you turn into a water snake? Close. No, you turn into a rockfish. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Circles on its bell. Yes. Uh, four mutant fish. Yeah. The, um, the gonads and gut portions there. Look at that cool opa. Oh, my God. Whoa. <laughs> like, he zoomed to another one. Hatchet fish. We talked about them before with their um, yeah. with their photo fours on their belly. Which fun fact, Hello. Pat knows uh, that's that's what my camera is called. His is Eska, mine is photo uh -huh. four, four for short. Yep, photo four. <laughs> I don't recommend uh, naming your child after <laughs> Pat. Though. Eska. You can name your child Eska. I I don't think that they would forgive you for naming them photo four. No, yeah, no, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at yeah, because forever, forever trying to take a selfie, someone's like, can I take your photo? And just like, no, not our friend. Um, <laughs> sorry, it's terrible. You do see chimeras there, side quest stuff. Yes. Okay, there's a good look at those jellies. Not a yeah. true moon jelly. Not a moon jelly. But kind of a mixture between Aquiora, the crystal jelly, <gasps> Giant squid. Yes. Oh, what an amazing game. It's the coolest. This feels like just like playing a documentary. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah. Also, if you That's don't get, if you don't get squeamish at all, there uh, there is a video on YouTube of a dissection of a giant squid. Um, Ooh, I think yeah, yeah, wasn't yeah. it down in New Zealand that they did that one? I believe so. Yeah, they did. That was one of the first like mega live, uh, yeah, live things. I remember back yeah. when like Periscope and Facebook Live were first going. Yeah, that was really cool to watch. It was a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. This is so cool. Oh, oh, oh. Humboldt squid. I mean, Nicely just done, the Humboldt squid. squid. It is funny though, like you really get a sense of scale when you watch, you know, these humbled squids swim past the giant squid in the video. Oh yeah, yeah, because like if you came across a humbled squid as a diver, like you, <laughs> you would be the one inking your yourself because these are are huge. Oh yeah, no, your your wetsuit's going there. into an extra wash if you run into a <laughs> yeah. humbled squid. There's the there's uh, amazing stories of a a diver who um, dressed himself up in Kevlar and hockey. Uh, pads and um, protection to go dive and film a Humboldt squid and he said that at one point there was a six foot long Humboldt squid that came out scaring away the rest of the Humboldt squid that were around because um, they can be cannibalistic and that big Humboldt squid uh, basically started attacking him underwater and eventually it touched um, it touched his hand uh, and there was a little <gasps> whoa scabbard fish yeah i paused here that's cool um but yeah apparently the humble squid touched some of his skin and uh they can smell taste and touch what they touch uh <laughs> um with their tentacles and so apparently that moment of it touching his skin made it realize that it was something like very very different and it kind of freaked out and like took off Oh, uh, when we hit the next big uh, sub landmark, can we get your interpretation of a giant squid water ballet? 
uh, Emily, it looks like we're going to have to come up with some new uh, <laughs> some new streaming setups here. <laughs> One of these days, we'll have our face cams on stream. That'll be a fun One day. Be a fun time. Yeah. One day. It's a little harder when it's remote, but... Yeah, when no. Uh, quarant be, yeah. Quarantine, quarantine streaming is. We'll we'll definitely have some some other things to yeah. do for sure. Yeah. If any of you can come up with a dance related uh, fundraiser for the aquarium, that would certainly force our hand. <laughs> <laughs> if you got all of your friends together. Oh, there it goes! Finally. Finally. Hey, look. look at that non moon look. jelly moon jelly. Okay, so first of all, Abzu de developers, we love you. You have we a flabby whale much. fish in this game. You're perfect. <laughs> you're you're perfect. excellent. You're amazing. This is also a moon jelly that you could call a moon jelly if you chose to call, you know, if, if you chose to do so, because uh, common names are flexible. But this is not Aurelia genus moon jelly. This is probably more of an Aquiora moon jelly. There you go. There you go. All right. I don't think it's going to let us meditate on Riftia, so we're just going to have to... Nope. Oh, that nope, is nope. that is Worm Erasure. That okay. is Worm Erasure. That's fine. So gonna... Well, in particular, Riftia here, Emily, uh, you mentioned they were chemosynthetic, right? Uh, no, I hadn't gotten to that, uh, but they oh, are chemosynthetic, right. and they uh, have bacteria that, are, that live symbiotically with them that in order to be chemosynthetic. So now I have mentioned that That's they right. are chemosynthetic. You want <laughs> you want to take it from there with your fun fact that you were going to say? <laughs> no, I already talked about chemosynthesis a little bit a little bit earlier. <laughs> I thought that's where we left off. I thought you were going to say like, "Oh, they don't have butts" or any like something like that. I, well, I was so why don't you say that? <laughs> hey guys, did you know Rifia they don't have butts? <laughs> they don't have butts. <laughs> they are buttless worms. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> No ifs, ands, or buts when you talk no about No ifs, Riftia ands, worms. or buts when you talk about Riftia worms. Uh, they don't have buts, so they rely on that symbiotic relationship with the bacteria that they have in order to get the nutrients from, from the surrounding uh, water. Uh, that's how they survive. They survive thanks, thanks to bacteria. That's life without a butt for you in the deep sea. It is. And um, there's lots of different theories that go around now and again as to where life started on our planet. And there's a good chance that uh, some life may have started uh, in separate parts of the planet independently. Uh, I'm sure that there have been more updates to this story. Um, but chemosynthetic organisms are a really good indicator of some of the first organisms that were probably um, uh, where some of life uh, really started uh, beginning was with chemosynthesis on, on the planet. These are modern chemosynthetic organisms here. So you didn't have these Riftia worms way, way, way back in the day um, when life was uh, first getting uh, started. But the chemosynthetic pathways that produce the energy that these animals use where they're splicing, they're cutting up basically uh, sulfur compounds to make, uh, to make food for themselves. Um, that is some very, uh, that is original uh, code for creating life uh, in an organism. And that's where you've got a bunch of different, um, bunch of different people looking for the same type of potential chemosynthetic pathways happening on uh, moons and planets uh, out in our solar system um, as well. Yeah. There you go. Um, my life is dinosaur themed. Uh, I had a wonderful question on Twitch. By the way, great name. Also, great name. Great name right there. Um, are these like earthworms or are they just called worms? And, and that is a really great question. I think that Pat and I sometimes just jump to the butts uh, to talk yes. about butts. But that is wonderful. <laughs> Very good. Bring us bring us back to basics here. So, yes, these are real worms. In fact, um, they're they're part of the same phylum. So. Uh, earthworms and Riftia are both part of the phylum uh, Annelida. Uh, so they are both annelid worms, but um, that's where they split. So they split at the class level. Oh, uh, my brain should not have had to think that hard <laughs> to, to remember what comes after yeah. order. Uh, so yeah. yeah, they split at the class level. So um, these Riftia here are going to be polychaete worms. 
Uh, so these are polychaete worms uh, that we are checking out right now. And I don't remember the class of earthworms. If they were ocean worms, I would know. But alas, they are <laughs> earthworms. <laughs> they are. Yeah, they're um, earthworms are. Earthworms are like in their own. Where are they at? They're they're in a different class, but an annelids are basically they're in they're the, segmented. Yeah, they're worms. in the they're in yeah. the clitalata. Clitalata. Yep. All right. Oh man, see, I, I just looked up earthworms here, and I I'm drawing a blank on every single term here below, <laughs> below <laughs> phylum here, uh, on them. Yeah. Um, please do not ask us any more land based uh, <laughs> land based questions, and thank you. Go to some other abzu stream for your <laughs> land based stuff. Uh, no yeah. land, only water. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Analyta is, uh, those are the, the segmented worms. So they're both segmented worms. But what is going on with, with this weird? Oh, uh, it's a great question. And, and Sophie, whoa, what? What is that supposed to be? I think it's supposed to be some weird kind of kelp, but. Oh, it's probably <laughs> like. Yeah, we're just going to call this a field of decomposed kelp that's been ripped out from the surface, animated like it's in the waves here. Um, but that is a really good, uh, cool connection here that um, when giant kelp is ripped out, uh, or kelp generally, when it's ripped out during the wintertime, which is starting to happen here with the big swells uh, in our area, that kelp, um, you know, a third of it basically goes out. Uh, to the beach, a third of it goes down into the deep sea, and a third of it floats out to sea. Is you know not not exactly, but those are the three different places where where the giant kelp ends up going. And giant kelp can uh, huge amounts of it can sink down into the deep and feed an entire ecosystem of uh, vegetarian scavenger down there, urchins and other things. So um, cool to see some kelp down here. It wouldn't be swaying quite like that, but yeah. Um, Let's see. You were going to answer a question before, Pat, and I'm sorry I interrupted you. I forget what I was trying. Oh, is the whole thing a worm, or is the worm just the part we see hiding when you get closer? Yes, they're tube worms, so they make their own kind of paper-like um, tube uh, that they live inside of. So, yeah, the worm is the red part that sticks out there. Yes. Uh and those are the respiratory plumes of that worm that you see there. What's this magical beacon here, Emily? I, I believe to we're going to have to go this. into the chamber uh, of our of, of the Ammonite souls. Save point. <laughs> what a beautiful game. Right. And you did collect all of those great ammonites, so. I did. Look at all of them up there. There they are, hanging out. Just chilling. This is a great part. I'm even going to turn the stream audio on and not talk. <laughs> oh, what a great game. I know. It's just so beautiful. If there were Ammonites in the Middle Ages, would that make Ammonites? Of course, they've already got their round table that they live inside of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, giant squid souls in our pantheon. That's the sickest. That's so cool. Wow. Whoa, they're green. This is so cool, Emily. This is. <laughs> Always, every time. I just love that there's kelp everywhere, as there should be. <laughs> it 
it's not it's not physiologically possible for the giant kelp to be everywhere like this, but I'm glad that it is. Oh man. Well, Pat, I was just looking at the time. How is it two hours? I don't know how two hours have gone by. How have two hours gone by? Well, first of all, thanks to the chat <laughs> for being amazing. So, uh, yeah, it was so because of the questions. so many good questions. Yeah. I mean, it always goes fast. Um, but uh, today in particular, it went very fast. It um, does. Maybe we should leave what's beyond this door as the start of our next stream. Without yes, saying. I think yeah. this is a good, I think this a, good is a good stopping point. Yeah, good stopping point, especially because you know we even could have spent, you know, the whole two hours in in <laughs> the in the whale fall uh, murderous pyramid room. Um, uh, when is next time? Uh, well, it should be next. What? We don't know for no. Abzu, but for our next game stream, uh, we are going to try and stream on Friday this week. Yep. Um, yep. So it's going to be a little bit earlier than normal um, yes. because we have a, a special shindig in, in the afternoon that we have to be at. So we are going to try do. and stream around one o'clock on Friday instead. Yeah. Uh, well, that's and then we're probably going to yeah. have to take about a two week break after that for yeah. abzu we're gonna try right? we, we might be able to squeeze something in oh no no yes. wait we are gonna squeeze something in next week pat we are squeezing um, we're gonna in squeeze in week, yes. yeah we are squeezing in octodad next week that's right yep that's we right. have special special octodad stream happening next wednesday um yep. that we'll be doing so we're introducing pat to octodad um <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be That'd good be time it, it is october starting tomorrow so that's right i uh, felt that was appropriate uh we have a special cephalopod awareness days coming up next week so we're gonna do some octodad um but yeah so friday is gonna be animal crossing and then octodad next wednesday and then pat and i are, are gonna try and stream when we can the following week we probably yep. won't yeah, no, we won't be able no, to next got... Friday because you'll be gone. And then the following week, we both are in an all week training. So um, so right. then it will be we'll be gone for a week, but then we'll be back after that. Yeah, things should slow down. Uh, we should be able to be do doing more gaming streams in like solidly uh, pretty much after after mid October. <laughs> and then we'll be good to go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Kalena Cole, uh, it, it's not a member night thing, uh, happening on, on Friday. So you don't need to, to check on that. It, it's, it, I mean, I guess it's not a sec secret, uh, it, it, it where it's, uh, Rachel's wedding show. Rachel's getting married. Yeah. So we're if throwing you know Rachel her, from our yeah, streams. From our streams. And, so, yep. Yep. We're throwing her a virtual wedding shower. So that's uh, right. Yep. So we're celebrating Rachel on Friday afternoon. So we're hoping that she's actually probably going to be able to join us for the Animal Crossing stream. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's right. So when when we hop online on, on Friday, a um, whole, whole bunch of GGs and Ws and congrats to, to Rachel, yes. um, if, if you can, if you remember to. Um, yeah, that would be wonderful. Yeah, cool. absolutely. 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 Well, hey, thank you, everybody, for watching uh, this stream. It was so much fun. There's so many cool animals and, uh, yeah, lots of tie-ins to other things. If you want to learn more about those worms, uh, Tomopterus worms and and uh, and the Esca and everything, we did that live stream yesterday with uh, Rob Sherlock um, from Mbari. You can take a look at that. Um, read the New York Times article about the Into the Deep exhibit uh, that we're doing. That's our pinned tweet right now over on Twitter. Uh, so if you want to follow up more on what we're working on there as the Monterey Bay Aquarium. And uh, yeah, let's get some let's get some W's and GG's for for Emily here uh, in the chat for running, running the stream, playing the game uh, so well, answering all the questions. And uh, then I would also like to request GGs for myself just for being here. <laughs> sorry, sorry, uh, Pat. I was I was trying to read. I the would chat. like to. Uh, no, please, GGs I'd for like Pat. Pat. No, for Pat myself on the back. Yeah, if everybody Pat, could just put those in the chat yeah, for Pat, me specifically. Pat, Pat on the 
pat pat on the back. If you could have a hard break in the chat of where your GGs are ending for Emily, uh, and then cut the <laughs> cut stop them. The, those, and then only these are okay. From now, these are only mine. Yeah. So th those are those are all of your <laughs> GGs now. Thank um, you. But no, no, uh, right. spe special GGs for Pat for carrying on no. the stream without me too. Well, I I no, had to go kidding. make a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> totally good. okay there you go see those are th those are my terrible ggs that i appreciate awesome um uh, oh uh fiore says i hope the move went well emily yeah emily, yeah you're streaming i am you're i am house. all i Great. am all moved into the new place there are still uh, home home renovation projects happening but i am i am here um we were we were gone the last couple of weeks because uh, i i was out of commission for uh some some health stuff commotion. so i was out of commotion for some health <laughs> stuff yes thank you for the the correct ocean on that pat um <laughs> yeah so uh on, on, on the mend um but yes. but yeah yeah um shout out to to all of the kindness that i had uh in in chat the 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 other day um for for people wishing wishing well um while i was on the mend there i, I appreciated yes. it awesome. um i see that our mods are are crushing all of the uh the normal promos that we do in the chat that's but, right <laughs> uh yeah we have merch uh you can sub uh, uh using your amazon prime it's the last day of september so if you want to get in that discount uh, price of any subscriptions here on Twitch. Um, go ahead and do that before the end of the day today, because um, you'll you'll have to pay the full price starting tomorrow. Um, and then insert all of the normal things that we say at the end of the stream. We had a weird start of the stream. I'm just gonna continue on with a weird end of the stream here, Pat. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Let's do it. All right. It's five. It's five forty. Everybody else. It's everybody else is off work. We're hanging out. It's happy hour now. Yeah. We're just chilling. You're flowing back and forth on the screen while your controller goes to sleep. Yeah. So, you know, for the ninety-five of you that are currently still uh, on the Twitch, and uh, how many of you are over on on YouTube right now? Uh, for the thirty-five of you that are still over there on YouTube, this is some yeah. extra bonus. Pat and Emily after hours, <laughs> <laughs> trying to conclude a live stream. Watch us go. It's not our strong suit. We're very good at, at in the middle. We're not good at starting it. We're not good at ending it. But the middle part is solidly solid. You know, <laughs> in waves. <laughs> in waves. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, thank you again for hanging out. We'll uh, be back on Friday. Um, thanks, Pat, for hanging out with me this afternoon. I've, I've missed this, Pat. Yeah, I missed you too, Emily. Mm. This is so much fun. This, this is the best part. Yeah, this is the good part. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll throw... I'll throw Trooper up on screen here, here too. She's she's sitting right next to me. She's being a very good girl. Uh, she was here oh, with troops. us most of this, this stream, our stream pup, official stream pup. Um, but with that, uh, we will, uh, go ahead and end the stream for the night and, uh, see you all again on Friday. Uh, in the meantime, don't forget to, uh, to be kind to yourself. Uh, don't forget to be kind to each other and we will see you all again soon. Bye everyone. Bye everyone.